start with just looking at these two um, equations. 2x equals 16. Well, that's an easy one. We know we can just divide both sides by 2, and we get that x is 8. Now, this next problem is where it's a little bit harder. A lot of people try to divide both sides by 2x. You can divide both sides by 2, which is fine. You would get x squared equals 8x. But I cannot divide both sides by x because there is a possibility that x could be 0. If x is 0, it is against the law to divide by 0, so we can't do it. Never divide both sides of an equation by a variable unless you're absolutely sure it's not 0. And if you have a variable, you're, it's, we don't know what it is yet. So what we can do is get them on both sides together. So I subtracted the 8x and got them on both sides. Now, hence the title, Solving by Factoring. Let's see if they have anything in common. Well, they did have that x in common. So what if I factor it out or undistribute it there? I'd have x times x minus 8 equals 0. Now, if you have two things that multiply to be 0, that means either this had to be 0 or this one did. So, set each factor equal to 0. So I'd have x equals 0 or x minus 8 equals 0. So the answer here would be x is 0 and here would be x is 8. Those are our two options for answers. And does it check? If I plugged in 0 here, 2 times 0, does that equal 16 times 0? It does. And if I plugged in 8, 2 times 64, or, yeah, would be 128, and 18, 16 times 8, again, it would work. Let's look at the next one. This would be number 3. If I had x minus 4 times x minus 3 times x plus 2, it doesn't matter how many factors I have, equals 0. That means that one of these had to be 0. That's the only way I can multiply two or more things and get 0 as an answer. So here, this would be x minus 4 equals 0. This one would be x minus 3 equals 0, because these are our options, or x plus 2 equals 0. If this is the case, what's our answer? x equals 4 x equals 3, x equals negative 2. This problem has three different answers, or three different roots, solutions. All of that means the same thing. Now, let's get number 4. y cubed minus 3y squared equals 10y. Uh-oh. Let's look back up here. Let's get zero on one side by itself, that makes life so much easier. All right, now, we want to factor. Now remember, you want to look for a GCF first if you can. I see a GCF, I see a GCF of Y. So if I factor out a Y, I'll have Y squared minus 3Y minus 10 equals zero. Now, I could go over and use the box, but when it, there's nothing in front of the y squared, most of the time it's a lot easier just to go ahead and factor it. Because your only options are to have y and y here. Now, let's see. What would multiply to be negative 10 and add to be negative 3? It's going to be negative 5 and a positive 2. We have three different factors, so we'll have three different roots. We'll have y equals 0 for this one, 
Now this one, if I set y minus 5 equal to 0, I'll get y equals 5 as an answer. If I set this factor equal to 0, I'll have y equals negative 2 as an answer. I have three answers. Next, x squared plus 6x equals negative 9. Isolate 0, let's get everything else on one side and 0 by itself, and we're going to factor. Ooh, I recognize this. This is one of those special patterns. x and x, this has got to be 3 and 3. But I'm going to get the same thing twice. What this is called is a double root. We have a double root at negative 3. There's only one true solution, negative 3, but we call this a double root or a multiplicity because it's happening twice in the problem, even though you only have to plug it in once um, to get that answer. Let's try another one. x squared plus 4x plus 4 times x plus 2 equals 0. Ooh, we need to factor that. Oh, special pattern. x and x plus 2 plus 2. Oh, this time I have it three times. And if I saw, set that equal to 0, I'll get x equals negative 2 and that is a triple root because we have three factors that all give us the same answer.